Hey everybody, it's Emily at Art Schooling, and today I want to kind of talk about what's in our September morning basket. So I've talked quite a bit about morning baskets in the past, and I'll link below the kind of how we do morning baskets video if you'd like to watch that. This year is pretty similar to last year and how I'm doing it with my youngest, but I'm also kind of adding in a morning time with my teens, just because there's a couple books that I have that I really want to share with them and I can't figure out any other time of day to make it make sense. So we're going to do them in the morning at breakfast and kind of call that our morning time. So I'm going to start with that actually, with what we're doing with the teens. This year a lot of their reading is more independent, so I'm not reading to them as much as I did in the past. So as sort of we're still going to have a read aloud. And sometimes it'll tie in with what we're studying. Like it'll be the literature for um, the grade 10 we're doing. But a lot of times I want them to read that book on their own. So I'm picking another book to read with them. So we're still currently reading the Color of Magic by Terry Pratchett as our read aloud. So we're about halfway through the book now, so we'll probably finish it early in the month. And after that, I'm not sure what we're going to read. <laughs> I haven't quite worked that out yet. So I'll share that in another video if I come up with a good read aloud or in my wrap up. Well, the other two books that I have are books that I've picked up because it's a, it's a topic that I want to work on or share with my kids and I just haven't quite worked out how or when in our day it will fit. And so I've decided to make these morning time books. So we're going to kind of alternate them. So they will be something we do every day. It'll be like maybe once or twice a week. The first one I have is Critical Thinking by Anita Harnadek. And this is from the Critical Thinking Company. I bought this like two years ago thinking we were going to use it. And we've just not. We've I think we've picked it up once or twice, but like I said, it would, I could not figure out where to put this in our day. It just never quite fit. So I've decided that it makes the most sense to do this as kind of a roundtable discussion sort of thing in the morning. So we'll have breakfast. We'll do some critical thinking. Like, critical thinking and logic go nice with, with breakfast, right? Get your brain working in the morning. The other book, I actually bought this for my youngest, and then after flipping through it, I'm like, you know what? We're all going to benefit from this. So I decided to also do this in the morning. That is Philosophy for Kids, 40 Fun Questions That Help You Wonder About Everything by David A. White, Ph.D. This is something I picked up because my youngest asks these ridiculous big questions all the time and I'm like kid I don't know how to explain that to you <laughs> so I would really like to do some philosophy with her so that I could help her to kind of like learn how to think through those kinds of big questions like for example when we talked about the Big Bang Theory and how the earth came to be and how the universe started her question immediately after that was so what made the Big Bang and I was like I don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows. So we kind of, I don't know. She has big questions like that all the time. Like, why am I here? And, and I'm like, you have to live and figure that out. So anyway, I really wanted to do some philosophy. And after flipping through, I mean, some of the questions in here are just fantastic discussion starters. And I was excited because when I flipped through, her question is in here. If the universe came from the Big Bang, where did the Big Bang come from? Yes. We need to discuss that. And I like that it also brings up um, famous philosophers like John Locke is in here. And there's just like so much stuff that we could easily spend years discussing. I really was excited to find this. We have, So that's what like our family morning time will look like. With just my eight-year-old, we have quite the stack we're going to be working on. I just, I have so many resources that I've collected over the years that I'm like, we have to do all of them. But... Obviously, we can't do all of them, but we're going to try to get through quite as much as possible because I just, like, I get so excited. I get so excited about books. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of run through the stack that I have here. Even though we're going to be studying space and earth science throughout the year, we're starting the year with the human body. I'm using the book Human Body Theater by Maris Wicks to kind of get us through that unit. And this book is so much fun. It's a graphic novel, and it's really cute, and there's a lot of information in here. 
It is deceptively simple looking, but it is really, really rich and deep, and it covers a lot. And we're going to use our Magic School Bus kit that I bought last spring as well to kind of round it out. And yeah, so this is what we're doing for science for the next probably month. I, I really don't want to spend more than a month on it, but we'll see what happens. You go where the interest lies and spend as much time as you need to, I guess. But I'm hoping that we'll still cover space starting in October. Our current read aloud is Trumpet of the Swan, which I'm excited about. It's by E.B. White. I love this book. I love E.B. White in general. His books are just kind of beautiful and juicy to read. I don't know. He, they just sort of roll off the tongue. I really love his books for read alouds. And I'm excited to read this to her. I haven't read it in years. And this is one of my favorite read alouds. So I'm just excited that we get to share that. Far as the other books that we're kind of going to be rotating through that we won't be reading every day, we have quite the stacks. I'm going to try to go through these relatively quickly because like, I have a stack here. These are not books that we read every single day. These are books that we might read only once a week or sometimes twice a week, depending. And some, some weeks we might skip them entirely. It just depends on the week. I don't want to make you think that we're going to be reading this whole stack every day. That would be ridiculous and we would never get anything else done. I have Story of the World. We're, we're using this for history. I also have the encyclopedia, the Usborn um, World History Encyclopedia. I just didn't grab it for the pile because I had too many books in my hands. Between those two books, we're going to cover Middle Ages this year and we're going to read about a chapter a week. We're also going to be doing Mad Libs for grammar this year to sort of play with that idea because she's never had any experience with grammar yet. And I find that Mad Libs are a really fun way to introduce that without ever feeling like you're working. I don't know. Mad Libs are just super fun. We've, we started them yesterday and she's already like, can we do all of them? <laughs> like, right now. We're going to do the whole book. So I'm going to have to go and buy a couple more of these. I like to start with Mad Libs Junior because, especially for kids who are new to the idea of um, grammar, they give you a list to choose from. So you don't have to come up with your own nouns or your own adjectives or verbs. They give you a list to choose from so it just makes it a lot less difficult. And once she's kind of gets the idea then we'll switch over to regular Mad Libs. It usually doesn't take very long. For poetry this year, the book that is scheduled in um, grade two, I need a new copy. It fell apart. Like literally the book just kind of like broke to pieces. <laughs> the, the spine cracked like a little too much and split in half and then the, the pages started falling out and I'm like okay I guess we're done. <laughs> so I need to get a new copy. I don't have it yet though. So instead we're working through Poetry Speaks to Children and this is a lot of the same poems are in here that are in the other book. But I like this because if we felt like it we have a CD that we can put on to have a, the um, oftentimes the poet reading their their own poems and it's very colorful and pretty so I think this will appeal to my daughter a little more anyway than the other book did although the other book does have a lot more poetry in it. <laughs> what happened? You okay? He just fell on the dog and he just jumped three feet in the air. Another new item that I threw in, we were going to do these over the summer and it just never happened. It took me a while to get grade 10 finished and that kind of ate up all my free time over the summer. So I decided um, we're going to do this as a morning time thing and that is What Do You Stand For For Kids? A Guide to Building Character by Barbara A. Lewis. And we're just going to kind of dabble in, a, in it and do like maybe one topic a week or every other week. I haven't decided how yet it will work. We're just going to kind of throw it in and see what happens. But I like this because it, um, as far as I know, and I've flipped through it repeatedly, and I haven't seen anything religious, so I think it's secular. <laughs> I'm like 99.9% .9 sure this is a secular resource. I, I keep expecting something to jump out at me, but it hasn't yet. So what I like is for each topic, so for example, fairness, it starts with a story about a real kid and their experience, something to do with that topic. And it talks about what that word means. So what, what does fairness mean and ways that you can work on being fair and what to do when someone isn't fair to you and how to treat other people and 
lots of ideas on how to incorporate that word and that topic throughout your actual day-to-day -day life. And so I really, I think it's a good resource and a great way to kind of like just start a dialogue about character traits and how we can be better people. Okay, the other resources I've already mentioned, so I'm just going to kind of briefly show them to you. For art history this year, we're still working through Vincent's Starry Night. And I'm also using the Usborne um, Intro to Art. These books are awesome. I really like them. We're, we also have another art book, but that's more for projects. Discovering Great Artists, I think is the title. I heard you do an art project based on a specific artist, but this book is more about like the art history, and it has internet links and beautiful, beautiful pictures. And it's just an awesome resource, and I really love it. And Vincent Starry Night, I've mentioned numerous times, but if you aren't aware, this book is about art history, and it goes through stories. So each chapter is either a time period in the very beginning, or it focuses on an artist and their art and how they created it or why they created it, something about the artist. It's a story. So it's really nice to add as a fun storytelling sort of art history resource. And the last thing in the morning basket is these two books. I have maps and the activity book that goes with it. And we're just going to kind of do this for our geography this year. And this book is just stunning. I've shown pictures before in a previous video. It's beautiful. This is not a really a reading book so much as a stare at and take in all the information on the page. It's beautiful. Each two page spread is um, either a continent or a country and just about like everything you'd want to know about what what comes from that country. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful book and then the activity book is just some activities to do to kind of go along about like the flags, types of instruments that come from other places, coloring a map, just all kinds of like things that kind of help to bring more out of the book. So those are all the books in our morning time basket for the month of September. A lot of these are going to be in the morning basket all year, but the ones that I do change out I'll share each month. Do you do morning basket time in your homeschool? How does that work for you? What kind of books do you like to read and add to your morning time? I'd love to hear more about it. Thank you for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Happy reading. Bye!